Hello and welcome to today's video. Today is the evaluating my eyeshadow palette collection tag. This tag was created by Rachel Stephanie on YouTube and her channel will be linked down below. If you haven't, you probably already know who she is, but if you haven't, you really should go check out her channel. I, I, I love her painting videos and she always, I just go to every video she watches because she always has like beautiful eyeshadow looks done. And if you need some like good makeup inspiration she's someone who i always go to um, to see what she's doing with her eyeshadow because she's very creative and very beautiful i'm also going to have linked below kessarina uh here on youtube she i recently saw her do this tag and so yeah she's just someone is some i constantly watch too and so i'm gonna have her channel uh linked down below i hope i said your name right now so let's jump into the tag my first question here is what was your first eyeshadow palette and my first eyeshadow palette, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm someone who's going to give you long-winded answers. So here we go, down this very long-winded road. Um, my first ones, ignore these here down at the bottom. My first ones were these deep potted eyeshadows here up at the top. These two rows were both Maybelline um, quads that I had since, I've had them probably since college, which is ridiculous. And yeah. I don't wear them anymore, but for some reason they're sentimental to me and since I don't have a ton of single shadows, I just leave them in this here a Z palette, but those were my first ever shadows. So when I started getting into makeup a couple years ago, I I looked back through my Ulta receipts and like definitively know these next two where I purchased at the same time. So I purchased these together. So once I started looking at eyeshadow, at the time, uh, the Kat Von D shade and light eye palette was all the rage, but I, for someone who was getting into shadows at the time, I couldn't bring myself to ever spend as much money as her eyeshadow palettes cost. And so at the time, I placed this order for this dupe um, by Makeup Revolution. And yeah, this was something that I was like, okay, well, apparently you need an all matte palette staple kind of shade. And I think that the, the these shades in this palette are very smart. But I never really found myself reaching for them, mostly because once I started wearing eyeshadow, I just kind of went a little crazy. And once I got shadow palettes with more cohesive, like with a shimmer, because I really like wearing shimmers, once I had both mattes and shimmers, I tended to pull those. At that same time, weirdly enough, I also purchased this uh, NYX eyeshadow palette. This is the Ultimate Brights palette. And yeah, you can see that apparently I wanted some color. Uh, and this is one, again, that besides this one shade that I had to repress because I dropped it at one point, it's relatively not touched as much. Now these are tighter pack shades, but I think I mostly use these three down here. And then occasionally when I'm doing a look and I need a certain color that I don't have access to in another palette, I do use this. But this isn't a, a palette that I care to like continue to reach for these days. This is more of a, if I need it, it's there kind of thing. So it's funny to see that those these two here were my first pal my first actual palette purchases, not quads or anything that someone had given me. But these were the first two I ever purchased and they mostly just collect dust now. All right, question number two, which palette do you use the most? And that one was really hard for me to, um, to answer actually, because I do a Shop My Stash series on my channel and I regularly rotate through my shadows and I, also have put a couple shadows in projects and so of course those palettes are going to be very like well used uh, for example that the one that you saw pan in like that was in a project so i'm leaving out those kind of answers these are things that i reach for when i want to do it not what you know not because i'm making myself rotate through these are th this is my palette that i want to use the most and it is the palette that if i take away times that I've made myself use them, this is the one I've reached for the most. And this is my Norvina palette. And at the end of this past year, this was only used like 10 times, but since then, when I want special looks, I reach for this. So here we are, here we are now, and the shimmers up here are looking a little bit worn, but I am very light-handed because these shades are very pigmented. So yeah, I think probably my most worn shades in here are both Soul and Love. I love the mattes in here. I, I just think they're really, really fun. I think the least, the one I use least is probably Drama, but I do use it occasionally. So I think this is a stunning palette. I love it. And yeah, it's just a really great palette. It's my favorite palette in my collection. 
All right, question number three. If you had to get rid of one right now, which palette would you choose and why? And for me, that was relatively easy because to me, this one is the one in my palette that I just don't care about it. This is the Bad Habit Athena palette. It is a dupe for the Huda Beauty, um, oh god, what was, which one is this? Not the rose gold, the Desert Dust palette. Wow, why did that take me a while to remember? This is a dupe for Desert Dusk, and I, again, this is one of those things where I was so drawn when that palette dropped to the colors in that palette, and I thought about that palette and obsessed about that palette for months and then finally when I was it like shop one of those apps came out with this I I bit the bullet and it, I believe it was super cheap like maybe under $15 and so I was like let me just try it out if I find myself pulling for these shades often then maybe I could justify buying that real the real palette in the future but let me just test out to see if I actually reach for this and I don't I don't think it's the colors fault actually. I, I, I'm I'm kind of mad because most of these shimmers for me just they're so powdery and like they just don't translate well on my eye. Like they just come off very sheer and they're just they're, they don't excite me. Like it makes me so sad. Like that shade should be so gorgeous and I just can't get excited about this palette. And so this is probably the first one that I would declutter if I had to. All right, number four, do you have a deep emotional connection with any of your palettes, which one and why? And for me, that has to be my Lorac Mega Pro 4. And this is, I have a deep emotional connection with this because this is my first ever high-end makeup palette. I saw this, um, the year that this dropped, was it like 2017, 20, 2017, I think? Um, Ulta did a like hot buy, like a half off sale and I just couldn't help myself that one time. And I think I have a, I had a 20% a coupon at the time, so it was half off, plus I got 20% 20 20 off of that. And so this was my first ever time. I really wanted to try Lorac formulas at the time because I just, I think at, the, at that time on YouTube, everybody was raving about Lorac formulas. And so it made me want to try one, and it actually kind of was really the first high-end brand that fell down close enough to the price range that I was willing to go to. And I, if you can see that I've gotten a good bit of use, like Butterscotch has a good dip in it. These shades here, Moss and Still Wool, um, they've, I love those. And actually Moss was my favorite color at the time. And I was really glad I tried it because it made me realize like, okay, high end eyeshadows are very nice quality. Maybe it's worth trying other brands too. And so from there, I ventured, in, ventured into like ABH and other, other brands. But I wouldn't have done that had I not tried this palette first because I just couldn't convince myself that they were going to be that much better than drugstore palettes. And I'm really glad that I tried them out because I really, really enjoy this palette. I, I do think the color story is a little bit hard to deal with. There are so many light shades. It's missing some midtones. Like these are all very dark. These are all very light. And then these are great, but I'm, I'm some of the dark shimmers I don't care about. But a lot of these shades I still very much enjoy, and so I still have a big connection to this palette, and I, I'm glad I picked it up. All right, number five, which palette was the biggest waste of money? Oh, and this one hurts. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to, to tell the story. This was my biggest waste of money. And this is the Mini Lilo palette by Natasha Denona. Now, this isn't the biggest waste of money because it's bad quality. I actually enjoy it. I, I like, I bought it because I was really, I really wanted to try some purple shades. These purples are, are pretty unique to my collection. I was very drawn to this like blue shade and I, I love the shade or the looks that I saw people doing with this on online. And the reason why this is a big waste of money to me though is I bought this on my, my birthday last year. Yeah, right, literally, right before we moved to Sweden, we were in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I Ubered out to the mall there before I was gonna leave the US and not be able to pick up like my birthday gift and things like that, and I bought this then. So it was $25 at the time, which I was like, that's a lot of money for five shadows. That's a lot. And I was swatching it in the Uber on the way back to the R Hotel, and thought that I put it into my bag and got in the hotel room and could not find it anywhere. 
and realized I must have dropped it in the Uber because it's so tiny. And so I waited until Christmas and when we were back home at Christmas time, visiting family and for my husband for my husband's graduation i went ahead and i couldn't I, I didn't even get the chance to put this on my eyes and all i wanted to do was wear this daggum palette so i purchased it again for another 25 dollars and so <laughs> this little palette has effectively cost me 50 dollars and while i enjoy all the shades and i'm eventually going to pan every single bit of this eyeshadow palette um, this is definitely the biggest waste of money I've ever spent on any eyeshadow. Not because it's bad, but because I'm an idiot. So, all right, number six. Which palette ha was the biggest surprise to you or that you ended up liking more than you thought you would or not liking it as much as you thought you would? And for me, this is my Morphe 3502 palette. Now, um, one of the early, like, after I bought the NYX palette and the... Uh, shade and light dupe. I did my husband gifted me the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette that was like I placed that order in like March or April and then I think Jaclyn Hill's palette came out in like June or July and he got it the first drop and then shortly after in October this palette launched the 3502 palette and I was so at the time I was really happy with my Jaclyn Hill palette like I, I, I was using it a ton um, now it doesn't get as much love for me, but this dropped and I was like, oh wow, I really like Morphe, like quality, you know, the quality of the shadows. And so in October when Morphe dropped the 3502, I went ahead and said, well, I already know I like the formula of Morphe shadows. Let me pick this up because I'm so drawn to this second row right here. And oh my goodness, this is one where, okay, my criticism of the Jaclyn Hill palette is very much my criticism of this palette in that there are so many repeat shades or shades that are so similar that when you put them on your eye, they look the same. So it's it's a lot. It's a, It can be overwhelming how monotonous every shade in here is. But there are some shades in here that just get me 10 times more excited than the Jaclyn Hill palette does. So for example, I love this palette for this red zone, these orange, this terracotta, this gold. Oh my goodness. Any Saturday in the fall, um, you can pretty much bet that I'm wearing this shadow, these shadows on my eyes for football season because they're just stunning. And this, the matte red is a little bit more pink leaning almost, but if you build it up on like this terracotta shade here, it's the perfect like deep red, like Georgia red. And so yes, I, I love this palette and I, even though there, most of the shades in this palette don't get touched by me often, to me this palette is one probably I could put in the other category of having a deep emotional connection with because when I want a wow red eye or an orange eye, this is the one that I trust and I go to. And I love these two shades. I know it's kind of ridiculous to love an entire palette based on like mostly two to three shades, but this one is one that I like, I might, I might fight someone possibly to the death if you tried to take this away from me. Okay, drama aside, uh, number seven, do you have a palette that you never reach for? And which one am I? Okay, my palette that I never reach for is the Saharan by Juvia's Place. And I bought this at Christmas because I was just, I wanted to try Juvia's Place eyeshadows. This is what this one looks like. And I was very drawn to, let's see if I have a somewhat clean finger, this green shade here and it's gorgeous I really think it's gorgeous but I honestly think that I just I didn't think it through before buying picking which Juvia's Place shadow palette I wanted to try I would have picked up at the time uh, the Duce palette I think it's called the one with the pinks and like this the mint kind of green but it was sold out at the time and I just I wanted to place the order and get it done and so this one was one of the ones that was left that I thought, okay, I'll wear these shades. But what I didn't consider was is that I have so many warm shades, like this, this like neon coral orange kind of color and this, again, terracotta -y clay kind of color. Like I have them in my 3502 and I don't, I just don't reach for it. This is a bronzy color. I wear, I have a million bronzes. Um, these are great shadows, but again, they're, every palette you have nowadays has like these like pinky red crimsony colors and while this quality is fantastic i 
I'm burnt out on those shades and I just don't wear them often. So I bought this effectively for like three shades and I just don't reach for it that often. Nothing wrong with the quality, it's other than I, I've saturated my own market. And last question here, do you have any palettes where you love all of the shades? And yes, I do. And that is my Subculture palette by Anastasia. This is a palette that I brought, I bought in the spring last year, I think, right before we moved here in the summer. And then in the fall was the first time I ever really got to wear it because these are very much just fall colors to me. And I think that this color scheme is one of the best I've ever seen in a palette. It's just so inspiring and beautiful. And yes, these shades are very pigmented and you have to go slow and work slowly with them to make them work, but I love all of them. I literally have worn all of them multiple times and I, I love them. This shade here is my absolute favorite. There's a part of me that doesn't want to reach for this palette just because I don't ever want to be without that shade. This Adorn shade, which I know looks like a normal bronze that everybody has, but it's just something special about it. These yellows in here are or kind of yellowy orange leaning shades are gorgeous. The purple I love, which I never, I don't really love purple shadow even though I'm wearing some today. I, I just really enjoy this. I, Cube up here is one that's super easy to throw on. I, I just love every, I need to stop, but I just love every, every shade in this palette is beautiful and I think it's well thought out and it, very inspiring. All right, that is it for this tag. I want to thank Rachel again for making this tag because I just really enjoyed watching it and I've enjoyed making it today. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments what you think and be sure to say hello and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.